And we are live with another episode of What the Fluff podcast. I'm Heather from Talk Hollow Farm and Aviary. And I'm Sean from Birds by Us. <clears throat> and today we're going to be talking about pet birds, more specifically getting your first pet bird. Um, when most people are looking for their first pet bird, they're going to, they look on a YouTube video and they see a, a cool African gray or <laughs> they see a blue and gold macaw on a movie. And they're like, oh my God, that's the bird that I want for my first pet bird. I want this large, big bird. No, it's a mistake. Do not get a large bird for your first pet bird. And there's many reasons behind that. Because these birds get hormonal. They have a lot of behavioral issues. A bite from one of these birds can really hurt. They scream. And a lot of the times, most people are wanting these birds for them to talk. And they can go, and they can never talk sometimes, you know? Like, you could get a bird and it never say anything for its entire life. I've had people that have African greys that have, had, have said nothing. So, <clears throat> with these larger birds, um, people tend to buy them for their, for their kids. Or even, like she said, in the movies and whatnot, birds, they, they see them as um, very vibrant colors like the macaws, like the scarlets or the blue and golds. These, not knowing that these birds can live 40, 50, 60 years if taken care of properly and um, the, the amount of time and effort it takes, um, you know, if you're, for example, if you're working a nine to five job or you're working a full time job, these birds are not right for you because these birds can start stressing if not given the proper care. And it can also lead to plucking. And people don't, when people research that, they'll see a lot of these stuff. But nine, nine times out of 10, the new um, bird owners or even beginners, they don't do the research. Um, and they go to the pet shops and they ask, hey, which one's the best bird? And the pet shops, nine times out of 10, they want to make their money. And they're like, oh, buy this bird, the, the eclectuses, the blue and golds, the grays. And yeah, um, they're very good birds. You know, um, they can talk and whatnot, but there's also a downside to them. They can get very loud. Um, um, the amount of, um, they can also get hormonal issues and whatnot. So yeah, there's stuff that you have to look out for when getting into these type of birds. And these birds are not meant for first timers. Yeah, I'm just reiterating a couple things. Um, like the, the loudness of the bird is just crazy. Cockatoos especially, they scream. Um, a lot of these birds can pluck. Um, and, and for the most part, you know, a nine to five, some people that work a nine to five can have these birds. Like, let me just say that. I mean, you know, it really just depends, um, you know, if they could be acclimated to it, everything is like a, on a schedule with them, like with larger birds. But, but for the most part, we are telling you, do, if you are just new to birds, do not get a large bird. It's a, it's a mistake. We don't, ultimately, we don't want to see these birds rehomed. And uh, as breeders, we tell everybody, even when you get a small bird, any type of bird, do your research, do your due diligence, because birds are need a lot of research. They are a lifetime, 10, 20, 30 year commitment, no matter what bird you choose. Every bird has a, a decently large lifespan. Um, and another point I want to add is that, um, like a lot of these birds have have very sensitive respiratory systems. And if you don't do your research, you could have candles, Lysol, all these harmful things in your household and not know anything about how harmful it is to your bird. And your bird can ultimately perish unbeknownst to you. And that would be devastating. I mean, one accident, you know, and it, it could lead to the death of your bird. And then you're out money and you're out your beloved companion, which is ultimately devastating. Yeah. <clears throat> Respiratory pro of problems is very common in birds. If not given the proper care, especially for new bird owners. Um, if you get a, a breeder that's um, reliable and they know what they're doing, a lot of times they'll tell you that, Hey, you know, you shouldn't keep the birds near like a, a kitchen area or somewhere like an AC or near a window because for example, like a window, if the temperature is constantly going up and down and, you know, um, it, it gets chilly or whatnot, that can give birds respiratory problems. And like she had said, candles can be one of them. Keeping them near a kitchen when you're cooking and whatnot, 
Um, having heavy cologne or perfume, that can give a lot of problems for the birds. And people may not know that. And, you know, if you do your research, you know, a lot of times those type of issues can get resolved. Yeah, and um, we prepared some slides for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about our choice for the three best birds we think are good for new bird, bird owners. Um, and Sean's gonna pull that up here for you in a second. The- One second. And, and note that these are our opinions. Um, and each bird that we go through, we're gonna talk about why we chose those birds pretty much why why they're on our list and the reasons and every bird is going to have a con a couple cons so these we're also going to talk about our cons as well with the birds that we chose could you see my screen yes i can all right perfect all righty all right uh, <laughs> our number three choice for a our third choice for a good first bird is the green cheek conure um and the reason I think that the green cheek conure is a good first bird is because it was my first bird. Um, I think they're very playful. They're very fun. Um, they are fairly quiet as far as birds go. I mean, all birds are pretty noisy, but I think if you just have one green cheek, it's, it's fairly, it's fairly quiet, a fairly quiet bird. Now, the reason it made number three and not number one or number two is because these birds are nippy, so they tend to not be very good with children. I mean, I have a, uh, some customers that get birds from me. Uh, I produce a lot of green cheeks, and they have children, and they're fine with their children, but they these birds do nip, you know? So um, that's one thing. They require a decent amount of training as far as birds go, and uh, that's basically why they landed on the number three spot. They live for about... Um, 25 to 30 years, uh, roughly, average probably being about 25 years. Now, these birds also, um, like I said, they're they're not too vocal, but there's like two or three times a day when they'll have a, like a little screaming sesh. So they're a pretty good bird for an apartment. But the reason they made that number three spot is definitely the nipping. Now on to our number two choice. I'll let uh. Sean, <clears throat> talk a little bit about them. All right. So with the lovebirds, lovebirds can make great pets. Um, they're very budget friendly. Um, they're not very high maintenance. Um, they're very playful. Um, taking them out of the cage. Um, it's recommended not only with the conures or the lovebirds or cockatiels, any type of bird, that having them alone, especially with their human uh, friend, uh, to have them alone with their owner because they can spend more time and they can get um like attached to you um a lot of people when they take two birds in like for example two lovebirds they can end up bonding together and that can be an issue but overall lovebirds make very good pets i mean they live a, a lifespan about of about 10 years i think 10 to 15 years so that should definitely be something that you should look into and seeing if that would be something that you'd be okay with when buying a lovebird <clears throat> yeah and i uh i personally raise lovebirds uh peach face and i think they make great pets mm -hmm. honestly they um they come in a lot of different colors which i like about them same with the green cheeks they come in a lot of different colors but the reason i land them on the number two spot is because they are pretty quiet especially if you have just one they're very quiet birds um they're they're friendly and they when you have them as a single they bond really well with their owners um, I always recommend a single lovebird if it's just, uh, you know, just a single person, but I, I've had people get two and they've been just as friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they've never bit me. I've never got bit by a lovebird period, but, um, females can be a little hormonal during, um, you know, breeding season. That's the only downfall. Other than that, they make a really great pet and that's why I think they land number two on the list. So for our number one choice, it is the cockatiel. And I'm going to let Sean talk about cockatiels because he's the cockatiel guy. So with the lovebirds, I don't really do much of them. I just started breeding them. So Heather is the one that's the go-to. <laughs> if you guys have any questions regarding lovebirds, feel free to contact Heather. 
Um, she has a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge in them. So I'll give it to her on that. But I specialize in cockatiels. Um, I have about 30 pairs of them. Love uh, Cockatiels make very good pets. They have a lifespan of about 20 to 25 years. Um, there's multiple different color mutations with the cockatiels. Um, they love a company. So if, if that's the type of bird you like or that's the type of like stuff you like, then cockatiels would be the go to. Um, they love head scratches. Um, stepping up wise, they're very friendly. Um, another thing is they're very low maintenance. Um, they're also budget friendly. Um, cockatiels are great talkers. They like to whistle, especially the males. Um, the females do too, but they mainly chirp. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's really it on my end. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I've personally raised cockatiels too. Um, mm -hmm. get to the next slide. I think I have some of my babies on there. Uh, yes, these are some of the birds I've produced. Um, I like cockatiels because they are just so fun. Like they're so tame and sweet. Yep. Um, you know, you're not going to find a, a more tame bird than a cockatiel, I don't think. Because like, not only that, they're so popular, you know, like everybody loves them as pets. And like, you can have multiples and still have a friendly cockatiel. That's what I love about them. The only cons I'd say with a cockatiel is um, if a male can be semi-loud and scream a little bit if you... Just depending on the male. I've known males that are more quiet than others. Mm -hmm. And another one is the dust that they produce. So if you have allergies and whatnot, I mean, and, and you're sensitive to dust, the cockatiels do produce a good amount of dust, more, th more so than lovebirds or the green yeah. cheeks. So that's something to keep in mind. So long that you have an air purifier around, I don't think you should have issues. But yes, that's one of the biggest things that people – I had a guy that called me a couple days ago, and he's like, hey, man – I'm trying to um, get a bird. Um, we started off with parakeets, and we want to upgrade now. And he was like, what do you recommend, the cockatiels or the conyers? And I was like, hey, if, if the, cock uh, the cockatiels are the go-to, um, but one thing to keep in mind is they produce a lot of dander. And he was like, yeah, um, I had also done research on that. His daughter um, was allergic. But, I mean, so long you have a purifier around, I don't think it's much of an issue. But, yes, that's something to look out for. <clears throat> Yep, and that's going to conclude our list for today. Now, just remember, no matter what bird you get, you're just going to want to do your due diligence and research. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you are doing so much research. Talk to your breeders. <clears throat> talk to, I guess, if you get a bird at a pet store, if that's your only option, talk to a pet store. Um, you know, sometimes they have the right knowledge. I mean, there's there's some pet stores out there that give some pretty bad advice, but you know, like talk to your breeders, do your research online, just pretty much um, treat this bird like it's going to be your next family member because it is. It's going to live with you for a long time. And yeah, that's going to conclude today's episode. Um, we will gather around next week to talk about birds and whatnot and see you next week.